everyone, it's Cindy and welcome back to Studio Lou. This is day four of Summer Camp Takeover and today we're looking at Myoshin, um, an indigenous Pueblo or often called indigenous American um, Acoma legend. So this is the origin of summer and winter and today I'm going to just read this legend to you that is from the public domain so you can do some research on it if you're more interested. Um, and I'm going to be making a fun journal card with a circular insert. These images come from the Smithsonian National Institute um, Library of Public Domain Images as well as Pixabay. Um, and so I'm just going to make and I will read this legend to you because it's really interesting. The Origin of Summer and Winter, an Acoma Legend. The Acoma chief had a daughter named Cochin Ninico, called Cochin for short, who was the wife of Shakok, the spirit of winter. After he came to live with the Acomas, the seasons grew colder and colder. Snow and ice stayed longer each year. Corn no longer matured. The people soon had to live on cactus leaves and other wild plants. One day Cochin went out to gather cactus leaves and burn off the thorns so she could carry them home for food. She was eating a singed leaf when she saw a young man coming toward her. He wore a yellow shirt woven of corn silk, a belt, and a tall pointed hat, green leggings made of green moss that grows near the springs and ponds, and moccasins beautifully embroidered with flowers and butterflies. In his hand, he carried an ear of green corn with which he saluted her. She returned the salute with her cactus leaf. He said, what are you eating? She told him, our people are starving because no corn will grow and we're compelled to live on these cactus leaves. Here, eat this ear of corn and I will go bring you an armful for you to take home with you, said the young man. He laughed and quickly disappeared from sight, going south. In a very short time, however, he returned, bringing a large bundle of green corn that he had laid at her feet. Where did you find so much corn? Cochin asked. I brought it from my home far the, to the south, he replied. There the corn grows abundantly and flowers bloom all year. Oh, how I would like to see your lovely country. Will you take me with you to your home? she asked. Your husband, Shakok, the spirit of winter, would be angry if I should take you away, he said. But I do not love him. He is so cold. Ever since he came to our village, no corn has grown. No flowers have bloomed. The people are compelled to live on these prickly pear leaves, she said. Well, he said, take this bundle of corn with you and do not throw away the husks outside of your door. Then come tomorrow and I will bring you more. I will meet you here. He said goodbye and left for his home in the south. Cochin started home with the bundle of corn and met her sisters, who had come out to look for her. They were very surprised to see the corn instead of cactus leaves. Cochin told them how the young man had brought her the corn from his home in the south. They helped her carry it home. When they arrived, their father and mother were wonderfully surprised with the corn. Cochin minutely described in detail the young man and where he was from. She would go back the next day to get more corn from him, as he had asked her to meet him there, and he would accompany her home. It is my ocean, said her father. It is my ocean, said her mother. Bring him home with you. The next day, Kochi Nanako went to the place and met Maochin, for he really was Maochin, the spirit of summer. He was waiting for her and had brought big bundles of corn. Between them, they carried the corn to the Akoma village. There was enough to feed all of the people. Maochin was welcome at the home of the chief. In the evening, as was his custom, Shakok, the spirit of winter, and Cochin's husband returned from the north. All day, he had been playing with the north wind, snow, sleet, and hail. Upon reaching the Akoma village, he knew Maochin must be there and called out to him. Ha! Maochin, are you here? Maochin came out to meet him. Ha! Maochin, now I will destroy you. Ha! Shakok, I will destroy you, replied Maochin, advancing toward him, melting the snow and hail and turning the fierce wind into a summer breeze. The icicles dropped off and Shakok's clothing was revealed to be made of dry bleached rushes. 
Shakok said, I will not fight you now, but will meet you here in four days and fight you till one of us is beaten. The victor will win Kochi Nenakau. Shakok left in a rage as the wind roared and shook the walls of White City, but the people were warm in their houses because Maochin was there. The next day, he left for his own home in the south to make preparations to meet Shakok in combat. First, he sent an eagle to his friend Yetmut, who lived in the west, asking him to come help him in his fight with Shakok. Second, he called all the birds, insects, and four-legged animals that live in the summer lands to help him. The bat was his advance guard and shield, as his tough skin could best withstand the sleet and hail that Shakok would throw at him. On the third day, Yatmut kindled his fires, heating the thin flat stones he was named after. Big black clouds of smoke rolled up from the south and covered the sky. Shakok was in the north and called to him all the winter birds and four-legged animals of Winterlands to come and help him. The magpie was his shield and advance guard. On the fourth morning, the two enemies could be seen rapidly approaching the Akoma village. In the north, black storm clouds of winter with snow, sleet, and hail brought Shakok to the battle. In the south, Yatmut piled more wood on his fires, and great puffs of steam and smoke arose and formed massive clouds. They were bringing Myochin, the spirit of summer, to the battlefront. All of his animals were blackened from the smoke. Forked blazes of lightning shot forth from the clouds. At last the combatants reached White City. Flashes from the clouds singed the hairs and feathers of Shakok's animals and birds. Shakok and Myochin were now close together. Shakok threw snow, sleet, and hail that hissed through the air of a blinding storm. Yatmut's fires and smoke melted Shakok's weapons, and he was forced to fall back. Finally, he called a truce. Myoshin agreed, and the wind stopped, and the snow and rain ceased falling. They met at the White Wall of Akoma. Shakok said, I am defeated. You, Myoshin, are the winner. Kochi Nanako is yours forever now. Then the men each agreed to rule one half of the year, Shakok for winter and Maochin for summer, and that neither would trouble the other thereafter. That is why we have a cold season for one half of the year and a warm for the other. So that is the Akoma legend that I found really, really interesting and fun and um, you know, like a lot of indigenous legends, there's some tie to the natural world. And this one, like some other world legends that we've been covering in this myth series, it has to do with seasons. And, um, you know, often in a lot of mythology, obviously a lot of it comes from like, you know, old ways of thinking where women are kind of more passive to men in these stories, but not obviously in all cases. There's a lot of certainly tons of strong female characters in mythology and, um, you know, history and legend and all of that. Um, but I wanted to focus a little bit, like I was very tempted in this series to just focus on like women goddesses and, you know, different like women who were, who were legendary, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, um, as an artist to do some work with the, the images of men. And so I'm really happy that I, I chose to do this because I really, I think the fact that this legend is, um, an indigenous one makes me feel connected more to being able to work with it because I feel like there's in this image and in many images of like the, the vintage photography that exists of like old, you know, chiefs and warriors and, and men who have legends in their, in their story. Um, there's a certain kind of, um, soul to the image that I think doesn't exist when we see like old European depictions of warriors and, you know, people that are like colonial, it doesn't exist, right? There's a connection to the earth and I'm sure there's probably some kind of a spiritual word in another language that I don't speak that, that depicts what I'm trying to say a little bit better than what I'm, I'm saying right now. Um, but I think you know what I mean. I think you can see the soul here and you can see the inspiration in that. Um, 
Yeah. So it's, it's, there's so many beautiful indigenous um, stories. And I, I recently completed um, an indigenous Canada program with the University of Alberta, where I got to learn a lot more about indigenous storytelling. And if you have some time and interest, I recommend looking up, you know, the story of Turtle Island and some other indigenous storytelling. It's a really lovely way to spend an evening just reading some Indigenous uh, storytelling. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the ephemera piece that I've made here. So it's a journal card and I'm showing you I've stitched around the center there where I inserted that corn. Um, so I just I couldn't find my large circle punch so I just used um, a roll of tape and I traced around in the center to cut the circle out of the um, the image that I've chosen for my chin. And then I've just done some watercolor um, marker, not marker, crayon rather, in gold on his shirt because I felt like, you know, in the legend they talk about his shirt being made of corn silk. And I colorized the feathers a little bit um, with some watercolor uh, as well. I didn't go too heavy. I just wanted to sort of add a little bit of color to this image. Um, and the gold is currently showing up in the light much brighter than what it is. Like in reality, it's not quite as, as loud. Um, but I do like adding a little bit there. I added a little bit of green gold in a halo around him because I thought of, you know, he, he had a pointed hat in the story and green leggings. And I, I felt like he represented so much, you know, green and fresh flowers and corn and growth. So I just now am accenting this because it is a vintage image and I'm adding a little bit of um, book spine to just kind of go with that rustic, aged, grungy kind of feel. And um, I should also make note that the, the watercolor paints I'm using are indigenous made. They are beam paints in that beautiful shell. This is their, their shell palette and they are all really nice, um, you know, mica uh, powdered, um, handmade um, watercolor paints. So they all have like a glitziness to them. The colors look like they're sort of dancing and glitter on the page. It's really nice. Um, so it's nice to support an indigenous business and be talking about an indigenous legend. So, um, yeah, so I'm just getting these glued down and we're almost to the end of this piece. And I really like how it's come out. I'm very excited to see all five pieces of mythology together at the end of all of this. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed. Come back tomorrow for the next legend.